Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pod, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through an exercise involving determining the pH of the resultant solution of an acid-base reaction. Now in ionic equilibria, sometimes we will encounter when I have an acid-base reaction, for example, a weak acid strong base reaction, then the question requires us to determine the pH of the resultant solution. So we want to go through a very simple exercise involving this example. All right, so let's take a look at this exercise. The question is something like this. I have 10 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube of sodium hydroxide. It is added to 25 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube of CH3COOH, which is a weak acid. So I want to determine the pH of this resultant solution given the Ka of CH3COOH. It is 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 mole per dm cube. Now the first thing we notice is this is a acid base reaction between a weak acid which is CH3COOH and a strong base so if it is a reaction acid base reaction then what we have to do first is to determine the resultant solution so the focus to determine the pH of this resultant solution actually is more on the resultant solution because once I've determined the resultant solution whether it is an excess weak acid, excess strong base, or exact amount of weak acid or strong base, then the resultant solution will be different. And depending on the resultant solution, the way for me to find the pH of that resultant solution will change. So the focus actually is to determine the resultant solution. Once I know what this resultant solution is, then the way for me to find its pH will be very obvious. Now, personally, what I like is to use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. Now ice table essentially it is just a tabulated presentation of mole concepts. So instead of using statement form to write down the number of mole of the species form reacted and the number of mole of species left, what we do is we write everything into a table so therefore it is more concise. So I stands for initial. So we want to determine the initial number of mole of species for this reaction. C is for change. What is the change in the number of mole of each of these species? And E represents the end of the reaction. So my preference is to use the ice table because it is a very concise way to determine the resultant solution in three rows. I can determine what the resultant solution is. So highly recommended in ionic equilibria when you have an acid-base reaction and I want to determine the resultant solution, my preference is to use the ice table. So you notice what I have here is the initial number of mole of the weak acid and strong base. So the number of mole of CH3COOH will just be the volume multiplied by the concentration, which will be 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Then sodium hydroxide, the number of mole, same thing, it is the volume multiplied by the concentration. Then I'll get 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Now comparing these two guys, of course, we will have to consider which is the limiting reagent and then 100% of the limiting reagent would be used up. So sodium hydroxide, obviously, this guy is limiting. So later, 100% of sodium hydroxide will be reacted off. At the beginning of this reaction, if it is a very straightforward big acid strong base reaction, obviously, there's no product at the beginning. Now water, I'll put a dash instead of a zero, because if it is in aqueous medium, we have a lot of water, but the amount of water is not that important, right? So I think we can just put a dash to represent that the amount of water during this reaction is actually not so important. So moving on, the next row that I want to fill up, it is the change row. Now since sodium hydroxide is limiting, 100% of this limiting reagent would be used up. So this change for sodium hydroxide will be minus 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So this is minus 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Now, once I have this change value for sodium hydroxide, essentially I can work out the change for the rest of the species. Now, why is it the case is, I know that this is an acid-base reaction, then the mole ratio is one mole of acid react with one mole of base to give me one mole of product and one mole of water. The mole ratio is one is to one is to one is to one. So therefore, for the change row, the mole ratio will also follow one is to one is to one is to one. So if the number of mole of NaOH used up is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3, the number of mole of weak acid used up will also be the same value, 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. But because it is a reactant, it is used up, so I'll put a negative sign, 1 times 10 
minus 3 because the mole ratio is 1 is to 1 so these two values must be exactly the same now similarly the product wise the mole ratio is also 1 is to 1 so this will also be a 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 but because it is the product that is being formed so therefore this will be a plus 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 water we don't care because too much water I'm not interested in the change in the amount of water in this reaction so I can figure out the end of the reaction right it is just basically initial add to the change row then I'll get the n number of mole so what is the amount of the product and the reactants left at the end of this reaction so this will be 2.5 minus 1 of course this will be a 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 mole so this is the number of mole of weak acid I have left strong base of course if it is the limiting reagent, 100% of this guy will be used up, so this will be a zero. The number of mole of your product left, this will be 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3, 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Water, we're not so interested in it. So this is the resultant solution. Again, you notice very concisely and very quickly, we can determine the resultant solution for an acid-base reaction if I'm using the ice table to present my calculation so what is this resultant solution you notice we have two things right i have a certain number of mole of ch3coh which is a weak acid so this is a weak acid now i have some ch3coo minus na plus left and what is the nature of this salt now the concept involving this is under salt hydrolysis so the idea is fairly simple what we consider is we will have to consider the nature of each of this ion inside this salt ch3co minus na plus now na plus because it comes from a strong base the nature of na plus is neutral na plus is neutral ch3co minus if it comes from a weak acid then ch3co minus will be the conjugate base of that weak acid now i actually have a previous video which talks about salt hydrolysis in detail so if you are interested i think it's good to take a look at that video to better understand in terms of conclusion how do we deduce that ch3 co minus it is the conjugate base of a weak acid any plus if it comes from a strong base why do i consider this any plus as neutral so moving on in this case i know that any plus it is neutral so it doesn't affect the pH of the solution I'm not so bothered about it because ultimately what I want to determine for this question is to determine the pH of this solution right so I'm only interested in the species that will affect the pH of the solution which in this case will be my conjugate base so CH3CO minus this is the guy that I'm interested in and this is the conjugate base so what I have is I have a certain amount of weak acid which is CH3COH let me write this here and I have a certain amount of the conjugate base which is CH3COO- now essentially what I'm having inside this resultant solution it is a mixture it is a mixture of a weak acid and conjugate base so what is this mixture now if you are familiar with buffer solutions then we should recognize that this is a mixture of a weak acid and conjugate base so typically we call this an acidic buffer but let me just call this a buffer in general I know that I have a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair and this is a buffer solution now once I identify this is a buffer solution then how do I determine the pH of this buffer solution and of course I can use the buffer equation to determine the pH of this buffer solution now before we move on to the calculation to determine the pH of buffer solution I think it is good to keep in mind in this case when I have a weak acid strong base reaction under certain circumstances I can get a buffer and when would I get a buffer you notice is when the weak acid is in excess now when the weak acid is in excess then what you do is the limiting strong base will convert some of the weak acid to the conjugate base then at the end of this reaction we will have this excess weak acid and some of the conjugate base form as the product so therefore we will have this mixture of weak acid and conjugate base and I'll end up with this buffer solution so I think this concept is important if you're given an acid base reaction we need to determine even before we write out the ice table 
whether the resultant solution it is a buffer solution or not by comparing the number of moles of the reactants. So keep this in mind, if I'm limiting strong base excess weak acid for a weak acid strong base reaction, the resultant solution that we're getting will be a buffer solution. Now since this is a buffer then, moving on, if I want to determine the pH of this buffer solution, then it is fairly straightforward, right? We just use the buffer equation. So as mentioned previously, I have a mixture of weak acid, CH3COOH, and conjugate base, CH3COO-, so this is a buffer or acidic buffer. And given the Ka value, then we can use the acidic buffer equation, pH equals to pKa plus log, concentration of salt over concentration of acid. In this question, it is fairly straightforward. The salt clearly will be CH3COO-, the acid clearly will be CH3COOH. So therefore, I can substitute all these values in, right? The Ka value is given 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5. So pKa will be minus log, the Ka value. Now log concentration of salt over concentration of acid. You notice what I'm doing here is I actually never really calculate the concentration because under normal circumstances, it is not required. You notice in a buffer solution, the mixture of the conjugate acid base pair, they always share the same volume. So the concentration of salt over the concentration of acid, you notice it will be something like this. If I were to write this down here, the concentration of the salt over the concentration of the acid will just be the number of mole of salt over the volume divided by the concentration of the acid will be the number of mole of the acid divided by the volume. And since they must share the same total volume because they are a mixture, right? So they are swimming in the same solution. These two total volume actually will cancel. Then what I'm left with will just be the number of mole of salt divided by the number of mole of acid. So essentially what we're trying to say here is in the buffer solution, because the total volume is the same, the concentration ratio of salt over acid is equal to the mole ratio of salt over acid. So technically speaking, unless the question requires us to calculate the concentration of salt and acid for this buffer solution, there isn't a real need for us to do that. I can just use the number of mole of salt and the number of mole of acid to determine this ratio and I can straight away determine the pH of the solution without calculating the concentration. So I think something for us to keep in mind, I can use the mole ratio instead of the concentration ratio for this formula here. So for this part, log concentration of salt over acid, I will be using the mole ratio log number of mole of salt over acid. So this would be the number of mole of CH3COO minus 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by the number of mole of CH3COOH, which is 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3. I can work this out. The pH of this resultant solution, which is a buffer solution, will be 4.57. All right, so that was the discussion involving determining the pH of the resultant solution for an acid-base reaction. Now remember for this exercise, when we have excess weak acid limiting strong base, the resultant solution, it is a buffer solution. So therefore we can use the buffer equation to determine the pH of the solution. But I think what is more important is if I want to determine the pH of a resultant solution, the first thing that we will have to handle is we will have to settle the reaction first. What is the resultant solution? And using the ice table, it is a very concise way for us to determine the resultant solution. And then once we have determined what solution it is, we can move on to determine the pH of that resultant solution. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.